And then we got to another study, uh, they call it counting the cost, where you get together with, with a leader in the church, which uh, is probably one of the more dangerous things that you can do in this church is get together with a leader. Um, and she sat me down and she asked me questions about um, baptism. And I would respond to her the same way that I responded to the other women in my study. You know, I've already been baptized. Um, I was baptized, what, uh, five years before I was in the ICOC. And that wasn't, that wasn't the question, that wasn't the answer that they wanted. They didn't want that answer. Um, they, they told me that um, that baptism was no better than a bath because um, you have to understand what baptism really is and things like that, and you don't understand it. It's very manipulative at that point. And, um, and then she asked me another question is why would, if, is there any reason that you would ever leave the church? And I told her, well, um, I, I am a married woman, so if my husband ever became uncomfortable with this church, then he decided to leave, I would go with him. Out of respect for my husband, I would not continue to go somewhere where he was uncomfortable. Um, and that, that wasn't what they wanted. They, uh, they, uh, I failed. I failed the ICOC test that day. Um, but there was always this kind of pressure to get baptized, to start your studies again. Um, your soul at stake, as long as you're not baptized, um, you're, you're in danger every day. It's, there's always, um, if, if you were walking down the street and you got hit by a bus, like you'd be going to hell, um, you're, 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 just, you're in this constant state of danger. And, um, and they were waiting. They were waiting for what, what they always wait for, that, um, that strength to go away. They wait for the spirit to be completely broken before they start, um, they start trying again. And uh, for me, they waited until the, uh, the roof was blown off my house. <laughs> um, they waited for, for the worst possible thing to happen to me. Um, and then, uh, in, in my desperation, I, I said to myself, I, I need help. I need, um, I need God. I can't do this on my own. And, uh, I reached out to one of the women that was in my study before and told her I need help. And, um, that was how I got into my second study. And then a couple months after that, I was baptized in, um, in my friend's pool. And um, there's just this weird feeling after you get baptized in this church because they're always telling you, oh, it's, it's such a great feeling and everything like that. And then, um, you don't feel any different and you think something's wrong. And then every time that they would talk to me about baptism or how I felt about it, how, how great was that feeling? It was like this, this cold chill would run down my spine. Like, um, the way that I described it was that it was like, uh, it was like watching a horror film. And, um, like, like watching a horror movie when that, when the serial killer is in the closet with behind the pretty girl breathing down her neck, that, that kind of feeling, it was just really scary. The thing is, is that once you, once you're a disciple, things start getting more controlling. They control the way that you dress. They're trying to control the way that you eat. Um, they, they try to control everything about you. If you're not doing everything the way that they want you to do, then they pull things out of their butt 